Hey everyone, Ben here, and today we've got the first instalment of what will hopefully end up forming a bit of a new series looking at how to improve your overtaking technique. Now, the usual disclaimers apply here. I'm a fairly ordinary sim racer with mid-pack pace who's learning all the time. For tips to achieve alien-like status on track, you probably want to look elsewhere. But my hunch is there's plenty more people like me out there, and as I have a YouTube channel, I figure why not share the things that I learn with those who are on a similar journey to me. Let me know in the comments if you find the video useful and would like to see more in this series. Oh, and hit the like button and subscribe too if you haven't already. We're starting this series by taking a look at what's commonly referred to as the switchback move. And to do so, I've got a couple of examples to analyze from a recent SCB World Touring Car series. Let's take a look at the first, as I, in the Alfa Romeo, look to make a pass on my SCB buddy Paolo Ambrosio in the Renault. You see the cars trading sides of the track through the left and right handers, which ultimately positions my car brilliantly for the double right hand corner to follow to secure the position and close off the following apex. The key things that helped me get this move done were patience. I knew I'd be unlikely to pass in one corner, so this move was set up several corners in advance. Second, a knowledge of the track, which allowed me to position my car with the double right hander in mind. And crucially, good judgment on the brakes and turning in points to set myself up for track position and exit speed in three consecutive corners. So bear those three things in mind as we now take a closer look from other angles. As I have a run on him, Paolo has sensibly covered off the inside line here, leaving me with no choice but to be on the outside going into the left hand corner. Given this is a 90 degree left coming up, I know I've got very little chance of hanging it around the outside, so I decide fairly early on to gamble on Paolo running it in slightly deep as he's pinched to the apex, allowing me to take advantage of my wide entry to the corner, cut back underneath him and arrive on the other side of his car, carrying more speed on exit. To do that, I have to brake slightly earlier to get the car slowed down and turned in to hit the apex that I'm hoping he will miss or run slightly wide from. And it works a treat. But the challenge is another right-hander quickly follows on. Paolo's pinched to the inside again, so once more, we'll try the switch back to get the high ground for the next corner. Paolo hits the apex just, but is carrying too much speed, allowing me once again to maximise my wide entry to the corner, be on the brakes, but also on the power earlier than he is, meaning I can get the superior exit to the corner and then out-drag him down the next, longer straight, despite the fact he's in the faster car. Now I have the inside line and I'm alongside him, all I have to do is take the usual racing line, defend the apex and not afford Paolo more space than I need to on the outside. That leaves him with nowhere to go and no real choice at this stage but to concede the position and live to fight another day. So the switchback is all about getting a wide entry with your rival pinched to the inside and compromised on corner entry. Being just slightly early on the brakes, not too early as you want to push the other car into braking as late as possible, and then getting the car turned and on the gas nice and early to swoop underneath and get the better exit. Now Paolo could have parked his car on the apex during any of these corners, costing us both huge amounts of time, but with a short term payoff that he'd have blocked my overtake. But to do so he'd have almost certainly risked locking his brakes and missing the corner entry entirely, or causing an accident. Instead, we get this great example of close, hard, but fair racing, which on this occasion I come out on top of. But it's definitely worth saying that in many other cases when I've been racing with Paolo in the past, it's gone the other way, because he's generally got very strong pace. But the switchback move isn't just useful to gain a position, but also to hold on to one you're defending. Let's take a look at this clip from the Hungaro ring where I'm trying to overtake fellow Alfa Romeo driver Tommy Kossinen in the 55 car. On two separate occasions Tommy utilises the switchback to retake the position I was trying to wrestle from him within seconds of my attempted overtake. Firstly down to T1 where I'm just carrying a bit too much speed into the corner and have too tight a line in. And secondly at the end of the lap where I'm trying to get past in sector 3 but twice run it in too deep allowing Tommy to take the wider line and cut back underneath to hold the position. The important steps in defending with a switchback are exactly the same as when overtaking. 
Tommy could have tried to match my braking, but then he'd have been stuck on the outside all the way through the corner. But with a bit of patience and discipline, he brakes just a bit earlier and harder than we do, and is positioned brilliantly to cut underneath us and hold onto the place. Clearly, I make mistakes here and get in too hot in my eagerness to make the move stick at a track where it's very difficult to overtake. This opens up the opportunity for Tommy to get the switch back done. But that's racing. Those you are attacking and defending against will make small mistakes. Understanding the switchback move will help you capitalise on those mistakes and gain you positions in doing so. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next in this series. Leave a like and get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the guides and races we've got coming up. And I'll see you next time.